Okay. Vroom, vroom. Are you ready to take Matthew for a walk? Matthew Cassidy, thank you so much. Oh, good God. Matthew says, Tech, I don't see why most people need more than 32 gigs of RAM for new builds, even with Ryzen 9 or iNone. URCD Keys is the best source for genuine Windows 10 and Office Professional product keys that work the first time, every time. Get 20% off normal prices using our discount code BST for Bite Size Tech and the link in the video description below. You know what? I'm just going to give you a simple answer to this. <laughs> Won't 32 gigs be fine for the next four years? No, it's already not fine now. Exactly. I had 32 gigs in 2014. You, you, you just, you're, it's fine for some people. Now, here's, here's the problem with your statement. You said, I don't see why. I'm sure you don't. Your failure to see has nothing to do with whether it's enough or not. We now have 32 gigs on most of our computers. I have I 64. Well, yes, because you're special. We've got 64 on our serious use machines and 128 on my work machines. I don't put excessive RAM or 64 on every machine. But when I upgraded from 32 to 64 on my home machine, I noticed it. It uses it. It reduces disk swap. It reduces RAM compression. It allows more multitasking. It reduces wear on the SSD. It makes the machine more responsive. Don't confuse need with will you, what, with will with what you can use. You can get by with very low level hardware and just suffer. If you're building a Ryzen 9 or an i9 machine in 2022, you should have 64 gigs of RAM. It's not expensive enough to matter. If you've got 450 to $600 for your CPU, $200 buys you 64 gigs of RAM. Mm -hmm. Don't buy 32 now and then go, well, maybe in a year or two I can upgrade. It's a $100 difference between 32 and 64. If you are otherwise an i9 or a Ryzen 9 builder in 2022 with a high-end video card and a nice case and a nice power supply, you don't need the $100 that badly to almost have enough RAM, mostly, probably, kinda, depending. Seriously. We've got several bite-sized texts and I just put the playlist for all the RAM. And Matthew, if you have watched these videos, then you would not be asking that question because you would get the nuance because you would have watched the bite-sized texts. A lot of people have to experience it. They just can't, it's a failure of imagination to understand that what they see in terms of use in Windows Task Manager is designed to make Windows look good. Windows will use more RAM if you have it, and it will swap in and out modules, and it'll compress RAM, and it'll use your SSD to hide it. You can use 16 gigs today. But when you add more RAM, it changes the experience. It allows Windows to disk cache more. You know, one of the places a lot of people see the difference in RAM upgrades is um, Call of Duty, 64-player, multiplayer, online battles, especially if they are running multiple tasks. They've, like, they've got Discord voice chat going on or they're listening to music or they're, you know, they're doing several things. They're gaming. Um, the textures in that game are huge. Hundreds of gigabytes especially if you're playing on a high resolution monitor. All of that can be loaded into RAM. As you load into maps, as you reload, as you go to the main overview map, as you go to the results screen and back to the main menu and then load into a different map, all of those get loaded into RAM. And if you have 64 gigs of RAM, it, it reduces the stutter because it has to fetch less from the SSD. Mm -hmm. Windows doesn't feel pressured to unload things from RAM. Mm -hmm. And it just makes the machine more responsive. Now, this doesn't mean that everybody who has an i5 or a Ryzen 5 or an i7 or Ryzen 7 needs 64 gigs. But if you're the kind of person Chrome tabs, yeah. who can afford a Ryzen 9 5900X, why do you want to RAM starve your machine over $100? 
Rocky says he's got 64 gigs now. He says, I don't care what my PC does anymore while it's gaming. That's an experience you have to experience. Yep. You don't know what you don't know. There is something to be said for being able to just launch a game and just and go, oh, I had a video transcode running in the background, or I had this program open, or I, oh, I'm who running. cares? Ooh. Let me put it this way. I might be playing uh, XCOM 2, or I've actually been playing a lot of Battletech lately. Battletech's a fun game. I like it because they've got expansions and DLCs. I've been playing the fl fl Flashpoints recently, which are kind of fun. Um, I actually recently started the series of Flashpoints that have a light uh, mech restriction, which is kind of fun because I've been playing with all of the King Crab 100-ton mechs lately. And, of course, at some point that just becomes a, a missile and um, auto cannon, you know, Basically, two heavy mechs is like two heavy tanks fighting each other. But there's a series of flashpoints where you can only take a maximum of 240 tons on a drop, and no single mech can be over 75 tons. Those of you who play Battle Mech know what I'm talking about. Battle Tech, Battle Mech, Battle Tech, don't talk about those of you who don't. Play it, it's on sale. The game came out a couple of years ago, easy to run, a lot of fun, if, if you like that kind of stuff. So, I'll have that open. Rogue will sit down and she'll be like, would you like to game join me for a game of Overwatch or World of Warships? We've played some Overwatch in the past yeah, we have. two weeks. Uh -huh. Sure. Okay, it'll be open in a minute. Uh, World of Warships takes time to open because it's World of Warships. So it opens up. Join her division. Play. Maybe just play for 20 minutes. She's got to go prepare dinner. She's got to go chase the kids down or pick them up from school. Fine. Close that. Battletech's right where I left it off. Yep. I don't have to close my other game. The idea of leaving your other game running while you open another game to play is not the kind of thing that I think a lot of people think of. In fact, I've seen a lot of posts from people who still say they still close everything on their machine because their mindset is like 10 or 15 years ago, back when we had one or two gigs of RAM, and if you didn't close everything, shut everything down, get everything out of the task tray, then your computer ran like crap. Mm -hmm. But you know what happens when you have a Ryzen 9 with 64 gigs of RAM? You just run everything. Yeah, LU said 100% I upgraded from 32 gigs to 64 gigs and it wasn't until then I realized Warzone wasn't smooth. After the upgrade, the game is now running smooth in the load screen with 64 gigs. Let me go copy that comment. People need to hear that. <laughs> it's under YOMO. The fact that... Right there. No, 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 no. Under the blue. Under, right there. See it? Lou? Yeah. I, I cannot... For some reason, people just don't want to hear this. It's like it's, it's like it's a failure of imagination to understand because they're still thinking, well, 16 gigs is enough. And it does not help with all due respect to my fellow YouTubers who spend way too much time running benchmarks on clean test benches mm -hmm. and way too little time using dirty, fully loaded machines and pressing F5 to run benchmarks on repeat. 16 gigs is enough. Well, when you hit F5, If yeah. you're just running benchmarks on repeat on a clean machine. <clears throat> but when you're doing live gameplay. First of all, let me go over this and... Do that. And Jonathan has a question for us. I'm also doing this because I want to put it on screen in our live stream so people can see this. I upgraded from 32 to 64 and it wasn't until then I realized Warzone wasn't smooth. People say, my game runs fine. No, it doesn't. I've seen people argue that Warzone runs fine on their four core, four thread i5. No, it doesn't. Well, I play it. Yeah, you haven't seen smooth. Uh -uh. Oh, you know my other favorite comment people make? No game uses 16 cores. Oh yeah, that one. I have shown benchmarks that show that's a lie. 
Not even new games. What year did The Division 2 come out? 2018. The Division 2 came out four years ago in 2018. I have shown footage yeah. of it running on a 16-core Ryzen 9 3950X using over 50% of the CPU. 16, thre 16 cores, 32 threads, over 50% is basically all 16 cores. It was in a very heavy multiplayer battle with three groups of enemies from three different directions, smoke grenades, drones. It was an excessively heavy battle. I have a ton of time in the division. The division actually in single player mode and relatively ordinary stuff will run remarkably well on a four core, eight thread chip. An i7 6700K from 2015 will actually run the division two remarkably well until you get into that battle. I was benchmarking, I was recording it, and after that battle was over, I came downstairs and you heard what? When I came downstairs and I said, rogue, rogue, rogue. Oh, you're very excited. And what did I say? I don't remember. I've slept since then. Uh, oh my God, that was incredible and amazing. It's very rare that I'm shocked when I test stuff. I usually know the results. I mean, I'm, after you do enough of the stuff and it becomes predictable. I was floored at how I had never seen it that smooth. And in a busy combat scenario like that, you're used to some slowdowns and you're used to hitches. There were no hitches. It was butter smooth throughout smoke grenades, through, through drones, through three groups of enemies. I was grouped up with another person. We were fighting together and the... Frame time graph never blipped. It was bloody smooth as a rock. Four years old. I get comments all the time. No games use over eight cores. Well, guess what? It's Luke Skywalker's comment in The Last Jedi. Amazing. Every word you just said was wrong. That's why MSI Afterburner exists. It doesn't mean you have to have it. You don't have to have a nice pair of shoes either. You don't need shoes at all. No. Well, sure is much nicer. Technically, you need shoes because a lot of stores have a no shoes, no... If you want to go into the store, you need okay. shoes. Okay. You don't want to end up like, um, what's his name in Die Hard, walking across all the glass. Are you, have you said enough about that? My current 8-core machine has 64 gigs of RAM at home. It uses it. My 16-core replacement for it will have 128. <gasps> no. Logan. <laughs> 5900X, 6900XT, 2 terabyte Seagate, 1 terabyte Crucial NVMe, 16 gigs of RAM. You fix that for him, I'm hoping, Logan. URCD Keys is the best source for genuine Windows 10 and Office Professional product keys that work the first time, every time. Get 20% off normal prices using our discount code BST for Bite Size Tech and the link in the video description below. $15 gets you a Windows 10 professional OEM key that is a real product key, activates directly with Microsoft, use it forever as it links to your Microsoft account and it works through reinstalls. Get a full copy of Office 2019 Professional Plus for about $50 that redeems at setup.office.com using your Microsoft account. It also works forever through reinstalls. We have been using URCD keys for almost three years now and recommend you do so as well.